Okay, yeah. So we're going to talk about this uh, black cat ransomware story. And you know, I always want to. I also want to touch on. You know, George mentioned the young age of this group. Um, I don't know if there's any parents on the phone, but I ha I have a middle schooler, and I can't believe that you know, essentially, like a account takeover is is almost like a hobby um, for for young people today because they they're trying to take over and hijack each other's social media accounts and things like that. Um, and you know, I think you know. 10 or 15 years ago, uh, that, that would have been a whole different ballpark, but for them, it's really normal. So I don't know what that's going to say about the future of uh, uh, cybercrime, but certainly right now we're seeing a lot of uh, cases with the nexus of what appears to be very young threat actors. Um, so, you know, as George and Ryan kind of gave us that really good background on uh, KTA 243, and it's, you know, pretty well known that they have been collaborating with groups like Black Hat. Um, so that's only going to force multiply uh, what they're able to do. Now, this is a particular case uh, related to Black Cat uh, targeting a manufacturing sector client. Um, and this one started with, you know, the threat actor got in with uh, legitimate credentials. Now, it's unclear, you know, from our investigation of how they got those credentials, but it's, you know, highly likely that that could have been some kind of social engineering attempt. Um, so, you know, for us looking at kind of the activity on the network, it was highly uh, suggested that there was, you know, maybe an initial access broker had been in place here. Um, so there was like some testing of those credentials. They, they came in, um, they tested the credentials, and then there was, you know, kind of like nothing happened on the network. Um, for quite some time. Um, in fact, it wasn't uh, until about six weeks later that someone else logged in using those credentials. Um, and that's where we began to see them deploying tools for data expo, network discovery, um, and credential collection for lateral movement. Uh, ultimately, during this time, they were able to exfiltrate um, about 600 gigabytes worth of data. And then uh, in, in this particular case, Black Cat ransomware was deployed and, and encrypted the network. So that was, you know, just that one case involving, uh, you know, potential social engineering there to get those credentials resulting in Black Cat encryption. Um, and then on the next slide here, I want to talk about another uh, campaign that we were seeing in the third quarter around uh, callback phishing. So this is not a new uh, technique. There's been a couple groups that have used this particular technique to try to hook victims. Um, in this particular campaign, uh, actors were using auto renewal notifications for some popular fitness apps um, and streaming services. And the idea was that, you know, the person would get this auto renewal um, they would be worried they wouldn't want their credit card to be charged for the service either that they you know didn't have or didn't know they have um, and they would call a phone number now when they would call this phone number they would essentially be socially engineered to download a remote management tool um, in these cases uh, the, the cases that you know were observed for this case study we were seeing zoho assist um, was being used now a couple you know things about this particular campaign and we are we are looking at this we're going to build this out uh, hopefully for a, a, a blog post uh, upcoming but some of the patterns that we saw was them targeting legal entities particularly senior uh, leaders or senior partners in those legal entities um, we also saw there were times where you know if if the victim didn't call with the first auto renewal no notification, another one would be sent. Um, so there was kind of like persistent targeting uh, of these victims. Now in these particular cases that we were seeing, the goal primarily seemed to be exfil exfilling data. So it was get it on the system, ex exfil as much data as they can, um, and then they were coming back with some kind of a ransom demand. So there was definitely a financial motive here. Um, now in this one, we weren't seeing any malware, but um, you know, obviously, we do see a malware in quite a bit of our cases, and I'm actually going to switch over for our next case study. We're going to be talking about Resida ransomware, and Ryan's going to talk us through that particular case study. Yeah, thanks, Laurie. So yeah, looking here at um, a Resida case um, study, um, and Resida itself, we, we observed um, or have observed impacting the healthcare sector in particular uh, recently. Uh, and there have also been a few advisories um, as well published um, in open source for, for CIDA in recent months. 
Uh, and in fact, just this morning, um, CISA and, and the FBI, in fact, published um, one of their kind of stop ransomware um, reports. So I recommend having a look through that if you're interested in, in this particular piece of malware. Um, so a high level look kind of here at the, one of our recent cases, um, the actors accessed the system uh, likely through a, a, a vulnerability and um, where they then created a, a new account on the, the system. Um, shortly after access, they deployed a number of uh, tools in their, their toolkit, one of which being System BC um, and another, a range of other tools, including uh, advanced port scanner uh, for network discovery, AnyDesk for remote access and Megasync for, for exfiltration. Um, and at the end, um, Resider uh, successfully encrypted files uh, across multiple hosts. Um, and then the actors, um, interestingly, right at the end, they changed the, the passwords um, of the to the system so that the employees, or the IT uh, staff, were actually locked out uh, and couldn't access the network. Something kind of additional on, on top of, um, of of that kind of ransomware deployment, which is uh, interesting to note here. I think one of the most uh, interesting things about this particular case is uh, the use of System BC. Um, we are uh, investigating System BC uh, in, in quite some detail, and hopefully we'll be re releasing some uh, some more material on that very soon. Uh, sort of a, a, a threat actor's eye view of what they see when they deploy System BC, um, but we are starting to see System BC more and more.